Hi again, friends. Hal here, Quail Studios Guitar. You know what? I'm going to talk a little bit about jazz today, and we're going to talk about the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. I actually did this song um, on Christmas Day and published it um, a few days after. I wanted to talk about jazz and my philosophy on jazz and how I look at jazz, how I look at playing music, especially jazz, because this is really kind of a jazzy song. Let's see, I don't remember when this was written. I think it was back in the 40s or something. I'll look it up, put it on the screen there for you. I'm gonna talk about it at the piano because it's an interesting song at the piano and I can also see the relationship of the chords and everything. Just not roasting on an open fire No. Okay, so the interesting about this, this, about this song is that when they do the melody, there's an octave leap. I love that. Chestnuts roasting. Now, right here, that note that we hit, roast, and it's F on the D minor 7. We start with a C chord. Chestnuts, up to C. And then right there on that chord, we hit a B. That B is the 13th of the chord. It's the 13th, so it's like a D13. So right there on that D minor 7, and you can find the uh, lead sheet at Patreon. Just go over there. That note is a 13, and I don't play it in... When I'm playing the, the guitar, I don't play the 13. I only sing it. Roasting, and right away, after we hit that B, going to an A, that A is in the chord, and so it resolves from a 13 down to um, the fifth of the chord. So, chestnuts roasting on an G is the root of the G chord to a seven. It's a G, uh, becomes a G7 chord. I put a G in the lead sheet because I just play the G on an, right? I just sing that seven, so I don't, think about it as playing the G7. I love to let the melody, uh, the voice, or another guitar, or whoever's playing the melody, flute or whatever, I love them to have those dissonant notes, the 13s, the 11s, the 9s, and I love to stay out of the way and let those just happen there. That's one of the things I like about jazz. Um, a lot of times you'll see uh, on music or something, you'll see, you know, just notes roasting, and then they'll have that They'll actually say to play that note in that chord, but I, I like to stay off of that note, that dissonant note, especially when it's in the melody. Okay, on an open fire. Let's see. Open fire. And then it goes to a D minor seven, and they're holding that note, right? Which is the ninth of the D minor seven chord. And then we do a G bass, right? which is really great. It's a D minor seven with a G bass. It's almost like a, a G13 with no third. That's really, I mean, you could look at it that way. Jack Frost, ja, sorry. Jack Frost, when it goes up to that note right there, that's a sixth of the chord. We're on a C chord. Jack Frost, nipping. again, G minor, root to seven, and then Oh, I do, it's a C7. And then it's a third of the chord going to the ninth of the chord, all by itself. F, and then I get off the melody and play the G7. Uh, a minor. Yuletide carols. So that, Yuletide, that note right there is the third of the chord going to a six. Because we're playing an F minor. And the note, the melody note is the sixth of the chord. It's like an F minor six. And then, so those notes right there, when we're playing the C chord, E, G, A, so it's like a C6, going to, uh, this is really cool because we're, we're actually kind of like going into the key of E. I, I, this is a neat song because it changes, kind of changes keys for just a few chords and then changes into another key. So we're kind of like going into the key of E. It's an F sharp minor seven, excuse me, F sharp minor, 
But that note that right there, the melody note, is the 11th of the chord. And then we change to a B7. Let's see. And then an E chord. <laughs> okay, it's like we're going into E flat. Uh, F minor chord hitting that note, which is the B flat, with the F minor chord is like an F minor 11. And then a B flat 6. Actually, it says B flat 7. But that note right there, that Esca, is the sixth of the chord. Relaxing into the fifth. Acamos, which is the third of the chord on the E flat. D minor 7. Everybody, right? That's the 11. And then that melody note on the G chord is the six. Okay, everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe. And so the same thing happens on the next verse. It's just basically the same uh, chord progression and melody. Okay, let's skip over the second verse and go to the, um, the bridge, which is, They know that Santa is on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh, and every mother's child let's see, is going to spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering, right? So let's take that apart. They know that sound. Okay, we're just playing, singing the third of the chord of a G minor seven chord. It's and this is really consonant. It's really beautiful. There's not a lot of dissonance in this part. Um, there's more dissonance in the verses because we're hitting non-harmonic tones, which are tones that are not in the chord, on the strong beats right when the chord changes. This doesn't happen in the verse. Uh, excuse me, in the bridge. This is interesting too. That's a C, B, C, and then it goes to B flat. C7. That's a 6. That's a G, this one's the root of the chord. And then there's a B natural there again. He's loaded lot, B flat. Lots of toys and ladies. Seventh of the chord going to the sixth of the chord on his sleigh. That note right there, that note is the ninth of the chord. Nine. So it's an F major seven. We're singing a ninth. And you know what happens there is that he's loaded. Da, they know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded. Lots of toys of goodies on his sleigh. And every. So we keep getting that C B C, which is a great, a great thing that actually ties it all together. You know, it's like a thread that goes through that uh, bridge, that C B C. Okay. Um, and every mother's child is going to spy. That note right there is an F natural, and that E flat major seven. That's a non-harmonic tone. It's actually the ninth of the chord. Seven, that D that we're singing, reindeer, is really a really a fourth of the chord. Or I guess you could look at it as a D minor seven in um, six five position. You know, second inversion. So reindeer, really no D seven how to fly G seven, and so. And then we're back. Okay, let's go to the end. Although it's been said many times, many ways. Right there. Ways. If we play the D chord or the D7, that note, that ways, that note on ways is the 13. Here, let me get my guitar. It's been said. 
What was that chord? Waves, Merry Christmas to That's what I call the G11 flat 9 to you I think that's what I did on the end. Okay, so what's happening? Christmas See, I've got a D. Yeah, I've got a D, A flat, C, F. It's got a seventh in it too. Two. So I'm holding that D minor seven flat five, and then I put the G on it. So that really turns it into, I think, a G eleven flat nine. To you. Okay, I love that chord. Here's the the D minor seven flat five. We just basically. Go right across like that and play the D note. And then we just hold that and put the G on the bottom. To you. And that's it. Okay. There you go. That's how I think of that song. Let me know in the comments below what you think and if you like this kind of explanation on songs. It's a little noisy in the other room. But thanks for being around, friends. Appreciate it. Um, I've got a Patreon page in case you want to know. Message me here below. Tell me what you think about this video. We'll talk to you later. Take care.